So my current work focuses on the role of partners of venture capital firms who make angel investments on the side. So what that allows us to do is compare organizational decision making to individual decision making. So in this work, we find that individuals acting alone are able to process private information that they have that their organization doesn't have and allows them to make investments in firms with observably weaker characteristics, such as uh, younger founding teams, less educated founding teams. Nevertheless, these individual investors are able to generate the same financial return as their employing firms. Dick Kramlick was a founding partner at New Enterprise Associates, and when he first started out, he was evaluating a possible investment into a firm called Forethought, founded by Rob Campbell. So at the time, Forethought was going, undergoing some major technological and financial challenges, and in particular, a lot of people didn't like Rob Campbell either. Dick Kramlick really liked the company and really wanted to pursue the investment. So he went back and asked his partners, can I go ahead and invest in Forethought myself? And his partner says, sure, but we think it's not a good idea. Dick went ahead and did it anyways. So the story goes, Dick goes back home, he asks his wife uh, to stop work on the house. We're gonna need to mortgage the house and then put money into the company. And he goes ahead and takes all the money out, invests in Forethought, even though everyone else thinks otherwise. The end of that story is that Forethought eventually renames itself. It eventually call, changes its name to PowerPoint, gets acquired by Microsoft, and then the rest is history. So this story illustrates an example of a case where you can have organizational disagreement between the partners of a firm. And in this case, so the, one of the partners had additional information about the company which he was unable to share with the other partners, not because of malicious intent, but because it's information that isn't easily transmitted. So in this work, we identify a distinction between two different kinds of information, public information and private information. But this might be more intuitively thought of as explicit versus tacit information. So explicit information is information that within a group that the individuals in the group can easily transmit and explain to each other. So that includes hard data, descriptive characteristics, and other kinds of information that I could easily say or something I could send to you via email. On the other hand, there's a whole category of tacit information that e a person can easily understand if they already have it, but may be costly to acquire. So for example, there's emerging research done here at Wharton looking at the role of gut feel in investments. And the one issue there is that I can't credibly express to you my gut feel. There's no reason for you necessarily to believe in, in my gut feel and I can't explain how strong my gut feel is. So as a result, that kind of information is limited. So we find that the partners of the VC firm individually pursue investments that appear weaker on observable characteristics. So what that means is they choose to invest in firms that are on average have weaker founding teams with less education, who are younger, who have less entrepreneurial experience. Nevertheless, even though they appear weaker, they end up performing equivalently well on financial characteristics. So if there's differences in private information, differences in tacit information between the members of an organization, then the, some of the members will have that tacit private information and be able to act on it, whereas other parties will not. In organizations where the organization has to jointly make a decision, for example, by voting, then the partners of the organization who don't have that private information will not be able to act on it and thus reduce the decision quality of the organization as a whole. So for example, most corporations, actually all corporations in the United States are governed by a board of directors. So now what this work can help show is that board of directors, by nature of the structure of the board and the, the fact that they need to vote, causes the board to err towards certain kinds of decisions. So for example, towards making business decisions where there's very strong public information about a possible opportunity and against opportunities where there's low public information and requires a, a major private information component that's not evenly distributed among the board members. So one possible mechanism to improve group decision-making quality in entrepreneurial finance is to require a stronger way for the individual partners to signal that they have additional faith or gut feel or private information about a possible investment. So one way they can do that is by putting in additional money of their own. So if, they can, if they're willing to co-invest with their own personal money along with the VC firm on all their, own, all their possible investments, then that represents a very strong signal that, of their own private information. So we find that there's role for organizations in decision making and there's also role for individuals in decision making. It's not clear we should always revert to an uh, organization a committee to make decisions. Sometimes that committee can underperform individuals acting alone and making decisions on their own. So the challenge here is being able to design the right mechanisms in order for us to understand when organizations outperform individuals and when we should ex-ante assign individuals to go ahead and make the decision on their own.